Welcome to part one of our waste management and recycling notes. So why do we need to discuss waste management and recycling? Well with seven billion people on our planet that's a lot of waste and this waste needs to go somewhere and how much of it can we really recycle? So when we talk about waste what exactly am I talking about? Well waste is any unwanted materials or substances from human activities. So you might say your homework is a waste because it's unwanted. Well I suppose technically you're, you're correct. Now what are the different categories of the solid waste that we're going to talk about? Well there's municipal solid waste, there's industrial solid waste, and then there's hazardous waste. Sometimes you've heard of this but a lot of times we don't think of things like batteries and medicines that we may throw in the garbage. Well technically those should be considered hazardous waste. We don't necessarily want them in our landfills. Today our focus is primarily going to be on municipal solid waste. One of the terms that we usually use for municipal solid waste is the trash. You know, we'll talk we'll call it the garbage can or the trash can. We don't usually call it the municipal solid waste can. So I've already written on this page, but this is a graph right here of all the various things that you find that we throw out. And these are the things that end up in a landfill. And there's paper, paper is number one. And the interesting thing about it, I put an R here because it is recyclable. You've got yard trimmings and you got food scraps. Both of these are um, able to be put in a composting pile. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You've got plastics that are recyclable. You've got metals that are recyclables. All these things are recyclables. But the big thing to take from here is a lot of things are recyclable. Wood can be incinerated. But the big thing to take from here is paper is the number one thing that we throw out, that we put in the garbage, that ends up in a landfill. So what did it look like in the past? Well, most landfills were unrestricted. Most dumping of garbage was unrestricted. I grew up in a farm, and right next to my farm was another farm owned by my grandpa, and my dad farmed that land. And it was interesting that there is an unrestricted landfill there for years where people had come from the area, from the neighbors and whatnot, and they just dumped their garbage out in, you know, basically in the back 40. And that's what they did. They didn't take their garbage to a landfill. Now, when, you know, a little bit later on when I was growing up, we would take ours to a dump. So um, things had changed from the day when I grew up versus when my dad grew up. So what is a dump? Well, a dump or a dump and burn, um, these are places where you would just basically dump your garbage. And every once in a while, they would burn it. When I was growing up, we went to the dump where we backed our truck up. We dumped everything into a big pit, and once a week, it would get burned. But this created all kinds of issues. First of all, there's air pollution, there's water pollution, there's bad smells. And then as you see in this picture right here, you're going to have health issues because in a lot of countries, people will salvage garbage. You've got a, in certain countries, you've got a whole slew of people and what their livelihood is or what they do to create a livelihood, money for their families, they salvage garbage. That's their, that's their goal. Whenever a new truck comes in, they quickly get out there and they salvage it, trying to pick out anything that's of value. So what is a modern waste management system? Well, it's definitely different than a dump. Remember, a dump was where you just backed in, you, you dumped your um, belongings off, your trash off. Now, a lot of times they would have a clay liner in the bottom um, to help protect the groundwater, but that was basically it. Where a modern day landfill, sanitary landfill, has clay and plastic liners. So if you see here, you're, you're going to have this clay liner down here. You're going to have a plastic liner. Then you have a layer of gravel and you have perforated pipes that go through it. So whenever the rain falls and the rain goes through the landfill, these perforated pipes will bring out the water and they will actually treat that water. And that toxic liquid waste, that um, toxic liquid water, is called leachate. And you see that word right over here. So they'll actually collect the leachate, they'll collect any methane that's created, and you see that right in here, and they can actually use that to create energy. Um, these tend to be airtight, which isn't always the best thing, because if they're airtight, they tend not to break down. So normally trash can break down in less than a year, um, maybe two or three, but with them being so airtight, it, it will take a lot longer for them to break down, well over five years. There's actually been studies found where scientists will dig into um, these old landfills, landfills that have been capped off and aren't used anymore, and they'll find newspapers that are 30, 40 years old that they can still read. Now, normally paper in Wisconsin it would decompose within a matter of um, 
a month or so if it was left outside, but in these sanitary landfills, it lasts much, much longer. And they'll also monitor the groundwater to make sure that everything is safe. Now, there are three components of an integrated waste management system, and not every landfill, sanitary landfill has this. The first thing is to take a look and try and pull out all the recycled materials and take out anything that could be composted. And if you take those out, then a lot of places they're going to incinerate the remaining waste. And they will do this to create electricity and then landfill the remaining waste. That was just another picture of another landfill. Here's an interesting fact. If we went to Ohio, the second highest point in Ohio is said actually to be Mount Rumpke. Huge mountain, well, it is a huge mountain, but it's actually a mountain of garbage. It's a trash. And Rumpke is one of the nation's largest waste and recycling companies. And so here we see an aerial view of that. It's hard to see from here just because it's kind of a side view, but you can see that it is tall and it, it's, it's the second highest point in Ohio, at least it's believed to be. And here's an aerial view. So you can see that it takes up a huge, huge, huge amount of space. Now, one of the components of a waste management system is incineration. And modern landfills may include incinerators. They'll actually dispose of um, a lot of the products that can be burned, any of your wood products, any of your paper products. And the neat thing about it is it, it's going to create electricity. So this is a good opportunity um, to create energy and maybe to save on coal and oil and natural gas so you don't have to burn them quite as much. So what could be done about waste? Well, one, minimize packaging. How many of you have ever bought a huge bag of chips and found that there's only a few chips in the bottom and most of it's air? Or how many of you buy cereal where you have to open up a box and then once you open up the box you find a bag in the box? Where a lot of cereals, you can just buy it right in the bag and skip the box. Um, recycle as much as you can. Reuse items whenever possible. Compost, compost, compost. This is something we could all do. And can we do that here in Baraboo? Can we compost things like yard trimmings, food scraps, you know, the vegetable food scraps that you have? Sure. Baraboo actually has a composting pile. It's back behind. This is the Publix Work building. And here you see the railroad tracks. You got Potter Street back here. And actually, actually, it's right here. They have a composting pile that you can dump your yard waste and whatnot. And I'm not sure if you're always going to take your food waste down there. But yeah, you know, use this instead of putting it in a landfill. Now, did we used to have a uh, landfill here in Sauk County? Sure, but it did close in April of 2005, and it closed because it was full. Now, there's actually two landfills, former landfills in the site. This one right here was um, started in 1970 and closed in 83. It's a 14-acre site, and the picture was actually taken from the top of a 70-foot-plus hill that's not necessarily a hill, natural hill, but it's a hill of garbage. Now, the first site was a natural attenuation landfill. The second site that is, you know, like right here, was a sanitary landfill. It had the plastic liner. They're collecting the methane, the leachate, and everything. So what is a natural attenuation landfill? A natural attenuation landfill is one that relies only on the composition of the soil and area to control the leachate. Remember, the leachate is that toxic liquid waste. So in the past, they would have clay in the bottom. And clay tends to be impermeable, but yet it's not perfect. And the one in Baraboo did fail. They did have some issues with leachate getting through the clay layer and, and having to clean it up and make sure that it didn't pollute all the groundwater in the area. They did have to work through that issue. Now, in the modern one, the new landfill that, well, I don't want to say new, the newer landfill that's now closed, they actually collect the leachate. So even closed landfills need to be maintained. And they actually collect somewhere between 2 and 3 million gallons of leachate. They'll bring it into the Baraboo Waste Water Treatment Plant, and they'll process that water. The other interesting thing with our landfills is that actually the methane that's created, the methane comes up, and they will actually create um, electricity out at our landfill. And they have quite a few micro turbines out there, and they will, they're micro turbines, and they'll actually create electricity from the garbage that was produced for a number of years. So that's, that's an interesting tidbit about our waste management or our former county waste management or waste landfill. So what are five good reasons to recycle? One, recycling conserves our valuable natural resources. Secondly, recycling saves energy. And that's huge. We got done with an energy unit. And obviously, if it's going to save energy, it's going to save on pollution. It's going to save on clean air. It's going to save clean water. You're going to have more clean water because we're not using as much landfill. You're not putting as much in the, into the earth. 
Um, recycling saves landfill space, and obviously that's huge because the amount of landfill space, obviously our landfill here in Sauk County closed because it was full, so the less you put in there, the more landfill space you save. Obviously, the longer you will have a landfill. And recycling can actually save money and create jobs, and we'll take a look at that in parts two and three. But the big thing is, if you were to incinerate 10,000 tons of waste, it creates just one job. But if you landfill that same amount, it actually creates six jobs. But recycling the same 10,000 tons actually can create 36 jobs. So recycling actually helps the economy. It saves jobs. Now, here's a little fact. Did you know that if you were to lay end-to-end -end 18 billion disposable diapers thrown away in the United States each year, it could actually reach the moon and back seven times? And imagine, all those diapers end up in a landfill. Now, how much do we throw out here in the United States? Well, I've seen varying averages. And the averages I've seen typically are 4.5 to 8. And it, it, it's only gone up. When I first started back in, well, I didn't start back in 1960. You see that here. But when I started teaching in about 1995, fall of 95, it was about 4.4, 4 in that area. But it's gone up each and every year since I've been teaching this unit. Now, in Wisconsin, we do generate 4 million tons of trash from recyclables each year. And the interesting thing about that is that if we were to pile it up in a street, and if we were to pile it up 4 feet deep, it would actually reach for 500 miles. Now, the good news is we do, if, if we remove the recyclables, there's only 300 miles left. The problem is we don't always remove the recyclables, but we could. And so what is recycling? Recycling is simply to use again or to reprocess. And when we look at recycling rates, there's quite a few states that have pretty good recycling rates, you know, 40% or more. However, wouldn't it be awesome if 100% of the states had 100% recycling rates? And you can see Wisconsin is about 30 to 40%. Now, not all states have recycling programs like Wisconsin does. I remember once going to North Carolina to visit my in-laws, or not my in-laws, but my sister-in-law, my brother-in-law, nearest North Carolina. He was stationed down there at Fort Bragg, and it was interesting because we actually had to, sorry about that, we actually had to throw out all of our aluminum cans and stuff, and it was just odd to do because they didn't have recycling back there in Fayetteville, North Carolina. So what is the number one thing that's recycled? Well, obviously batteries because you have to turn a battery in before you get your new one. Um, but right here, steel cans, metals are the number one things that's recycled right now. And it'd be nice if everything, but still only 64.3% as of 2007 were recycled. It'd be nice to get that closer to 100%. Now that does end part one, and I promise you this is the longer of the three parts. The other parts should all be fairly quick and simple. As always, if you have any questions, bring them into class, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.